Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie, and we are back for episode number 23 of season two of Live with Annie. I am so glad you're here to join us. Thank you so much. We know there are lots of ways you could be spending this time, so we really appreciate it when you make time to be with us. We do ask that if you enjoy these episodes, you give us some hearts or thumbs up and take a minute to follow us and like us wherever you are watching. And if you know somebody else who you think would enjoy the information that we share, we'd love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie too. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them while you're watching. That will take them directly to the episode so they can watch it too. And if tagging is new to you, just type the at symbol followed by their name, click on it, type in a message to them if you'd like, submit it, and it's on its way to them. Finally, if you have any questions as we go through today's program, please be sure to add them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them before we close. We really love reading your comments, so be sure to interact with us as we go. I have an itch on my left eyebrow today. Before we get started with today's program, I want to give a little plug for Biani Trunk Shows. If you receive the emails that we send reminding you about this live event, you'll notice that we've begun listing the shops who currently have Biani Trunk Shows on display. We also do our best to feature the shops who have Biani Trunk Shows during our Live with Annie events each week. It's just one way that we work to support local quilt shops, and we really thank you both for visiting those shops and for encouraging your friends to do so as well. Just this week, I've heard from two shops saying how much they enjoyed their Biani trunk show. Chuck and Gail at Beach Time Quilts in Ocean Shores, Washington, who were one of the grand prize winners in this year's LQS contest, sent us a really sweet thank you note when they returned their trunk show. They raved about how much they and their customers enjoyed the show, saying we had customers driving from other states and meeting at our store just to see the Biani trunk show. I also talked yesterday to Rosinda at 35th Avenue Sew so and Vac in Phoenix, Arizona. They're ready to return their show, but they are already making plans for their next. Rosinda said it was really fun to see the strong Biani following. And she said lots of customers came into the store asking, where's the Biani trunk show? She said, next time we are going to know to borrow lots more models. We did not have enough. I love that as I'd so much rather those models were out working instead of hanging around the closet like lazy teenagers. So again, thank you for your support of both us and your local quilt shop. We so appreciate it. If your shop hasn't brought in a, lot, a by any trunk show, please be sure to mention our program to them because trunk shows are a great way for you to see by any models up close and personal and stores appreciate them as they have ready-made models without having to do the sewing themselves. Shops can borrow one model or they can borrow a hundred models. It's up to them. They get to keep them for a month and all they have to do is purchase six patterns for each model that they borrow and pay shipping to and from their store. So they can get all the details and request a show just by going to buyanny.com slash trunk underscore shows. So um, pass that on to them if you have a local shop who you'd like to see bring in a show and we really appreciate you helping us spread the word. All right, last week we had a really great visit with Krista Watson of Krista Quilts, who shared tips for quilting the fabrics for your Biani projects using a domestic sewing machine. She made free motion quilting a big one yard piece of fabric and soft and stable look so very easy. I loved all the tips she shared and have heard from lots of you too who said how, you mu how much you enjoyed them. So if you missed last week's episode, or if you want to watch it again, remember that you can find all the previous 74 episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com slash live, L-I-V-E. We'll put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. Here's a little heads up too about some upcoming episodes. On August 3rd, we are going to be joined by Amy from Material Girls Quilt Boutique in La Plata, Maryland. Amy is going to share tips for both quilting and embroidery for bag making. And on November 16th, Amanda Murphy will be joining us to share tips for using a domestic machine to do ruler work quilting. 
We have got so many amazing guests lined up for this year, so mark your calendar to join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. You're not going to want to miss any of them. I need a quick drink before we go on. So this week and next week, we're going to showcase our favorite Biani patterns for purses, totes, and accessories, sharing a mini trunk show of our favorite bag patterns. This week, we're going to focus on purse style bags. Next week, we'll cover totes, a few more purses, and accessories. Note that all of the purses that we're showing today are designed to be made with Biani Soft and Stable. Soft and Stable gives them great body and stability, it ensures also that they'll be lightweight and washable for long-lasting wear. We are going to show an example of a bag made with batting later in the program so you can see the difference that Soft and Stable makes. Note too before we start that we have prepared comparison charts for most of the purses and totes so that you can compare their features and their sizes. We just uploaded those today so this is something brand new at our website. To access those charts, just go to the product page for the bag pattern that you are considering. And once there, you're going to find a tab that says Comparison Chart. When you click on that tab, you will see two charts, Purse slash Totes Comparison Chart 1 and Purse slash Totes Comparison Chart 2. So space was limited, so not every single purse or tote pattern is listed, but we tried to get the major ones. And we also tried to group similar similarly styled bags together on each chart. Just know that you will be able to see the numbers most easily by just viewing them on the computer screen. But there are also PDF versions there if you'd like to print them. All right, let's get started looking at some purses. We are going to start with this fun set, um, which is called Annie's Favorite Purses. This was not only one of my very first patterns and my very first purse pattern, but it was also the impetus that pushed me to create Soft and Stable. And though the pattern was written over 20 years ago, it's still one of my very favorite bags to carry. So the pattern includes instructions for purses in two sizes. They would make great mother-daughter bags. Both of them have handles for carrying over the shoulder or arm and a zippered top closure. I really love knowing that if my purse, purse falls off the car seat, everything inside is safe and secure. We put buttons on the bottom of the large bag to help keep the bottom up off the floor. It also has two outer slip pockets, one on the front, one on the back. These are perfect for your phone or keys. Inside, there are six more slip pockets. So I'm gonna try to turn this so you can see it. Can you see those okay? All right, so um, they're on the side and they'll keep all your little things organized. That leaves the middle of it open so you can put your wallet in there, a bottle of water, your book, whatever else you want to carry. Down in the bottom, there is a sleeve that covers a base stabilizer and I used one just made out of foam board in here, but you can push that then into the bottom of the bag to give it a nice firm base. The small bag also has a little base stabilizer at the bottom, which helps it stand tall and straight. And it has two outer slip pockets, uh, but no pockets on the inside. So it's just plain on the inside. So this is a perfect little purse for kids, little ones, or times when you just want to carry something small. It's the perfect size for just a phone and a small wallet if you want to do that. So one of my very favorite parts about this bag is that the entire body is quilted. There is no loose lining. That means that these pockets are securely fastened to the body of the bag so everything stays put. It's not loose and baggy inside there. Do note that this is one of our older patterns, so there is no add-on video series for it, nor does it have our newest illustrations and layouts. On the whole though, it's a really easy bag to make as most of it is assembled while the pieces are flat. The body starts as just one long, large rectangle of fabric. You attach the pockets on each end of it. Then you attach the, the handles and the borders and um, the handles are used to cover the raw edges of the pockets. The bottom border covers that and um, then you finish the bag. So the pattern does not call for fusible interfacing on these borders, 
but if I were updating this pattern today, I would definitely put some fusible interfacing on the bottom of these so that you don't see the fabric from underneath showing through. So after you've got the whole outside done, then you attach a zipper at the top because these ends of the zipper are finished with tabs and it's sewn straight to the bag, you don't have the luxury that we've all gotten used to on Biani bags of opening your zipper to move the part of the bag out of the way. So when you sew the last side of this zipper down, it requires a little bit of maneuvering. It's not nearly as easy as it would be if the zipper could be opened all the way. Once you've got the zipper in, then your last step is to sew some French seams which finish these inside raw edges. The trick for sewing these French seams is to wonder clip the layers together really well and then use a zipper foot so that you can get your needle as close to that seam as possible. And then the very last step is just to make boxed bottoms and you're done. Before we move on to another bag, I wanted to talk a minute about these um, embellishments that we have on the front of each of these pockets. So I always like to know which side of my purse or bag is the front and which is the back. Because I put everything in a particular spot, that just makes it easier for me to know where to look. So often when I'm designing a purse or a bag tote, I will put one of our little Biani tags on the front pocket so I know that that one's the front. On this one, it was designed long before we had those. So here we added a little flower pin to the front. We made this flower pin using scraps of fabric and soft and stable, and there is a free pattern on our website if you want to make one. Um, we'll put up the link if you'd like to get it, or just go to patterns and click on the free patterns section and you'll find it in there. Basically, you just sandwich a piece of soft and stable between two layers of fabric, and then trace the fabric on, or the flower design that comes in the pattern onto it. Then you sew along the marked line and sew again about a quarter of an inch away from that marked line. That holds the layers together so that when you go to cut it out in between those two stitching lines, it's really easy and your fabric's not lifting up and getting away from you. So you're going to make one big flower, one smaller flower, layer them top on top of each other, and then just put a button or two on top um, to do the center of your flower. So it's super simple and easy. On this little bag, we did a folded flower, and I cut out samples to show how to do that, but I did all this like a week ago, and I'm not sure where I put them. So we're gonna skip that right now. If I find them in here as we go through the other stuff, we'll come back to them later. We do have a little pattern for it that um, I think we're going to add to our free pattern section, but we haven't done that yet. So. Um, We'll watch for that later. So we're going to move on from this one for right now. All right. So the next purse, that's Annie's favorite purses. The next one I want to show you is this little one, which is another really tiny purse. Um, it too is embellished with a flower on the front. So it's just a classy little wristlet clutch. It has a ruffled rosette on the front, so it'd be a perfect accessory for a special outfit if you're going out for the night. So this little rosette is made by attaching fabric strips in various lengths to the front. So you do all these little ones, and then you do one that's extra long, and you put a gathering stitch in, in it, pull it up, and then just wind it around to create this cute fabric flower that's on the front. So again, it has a detachable wristlet strap, and that attaches just to the zipper pull that's on the, the top of the bag. So inside the bag, whoops, I had that one open, are some slip pockets on each side. So there's three of them that are designed for credit cards, and then there's others that are a little bit wider for cash or you know lipstick, whatever you want to put in there. And on these, we added soft and stable to the bags to give them really good structure and a real professional finish. So this pattern was designed almost 10 years ago when we were asked to make something special using this particular fabric, which was um, celebrating Downton Abbey. And Andover Fabrics had designed it and they were featuring it at Quilt Market. I have to confess that I have never watched Downton Abbey, but we, um, I saw pictures and this little purse was inspired by the ladies that are in that show. This purse was always a great big hit when we take it to a show, especially in the South, and it would be a great little purse for prom or a wedding or, you know, just a night out on the town. 
So again, that is called Going Downton for Downton Abbey. All right, we're going to move on now to another oldie but goodie pattern. And I've got this one in a couple of variations. So this, come on, stand up. This one is called Serenity. And this um, pattern features an asymmetrical front flap closure that is perfect if you've got a unique fabric to use. And this is another pattern that was inspired by a particular line of fabric. In this case, it was a gelato fabric that had a really wonderful leaf pattern and a coordinating gradating design. So the pattern includes instructions for texturizing the flap using shrinking fabric like Bosal Stitch and Steam. And then we added a layer of wool batting between the fabric and the stitch and steam before stitching it to give even more dimension to the textured flap. And I think I just remembered where all that stuff, stuff is. Yes, right here. All of it. I thought I put something for Serenity on here. I did. Uh, not the piece I thought, though. This is what happens when you prepare ahead of time and then get involved in 20 other projects. You forget where you put stuff and what you had. But if you go to the product page for Serenity on our website, you are going to find a video that shows all the steps for doing that. And you can know that a half yard package of Stitch and Steam is enough to texturize the flaps for three bags or to make a bag and then have leftovers for another project or two. And of course, if you want, you can just skip the texturizing step, step and make this um, flap with just plain or quilted fabrics. Because we wanted all the focus to be on this textured flap, we didn't do any quilting on the body of the bag. So to make this, we just lay our fabric down on our soft and stable, sew around the outside edges of it, cut it out, put the lining on, sew around that, and that joins our soft and stable to our fabric without giving us the distraction of quilting lines. And again, the soft and stable gives really good stability and a nice tailored finish to it. So the strap on the bag is really wide and we did put soft and stable inside it as well. So it's really comfortable to carry. It's got some nice padding and it attaches to the bag with rings. So the pattern calls for two inch wooden rings and I actually buy these at like Lowe's or a home improvement store. They're shower or um, drapery curtain rings. I take out the little hooks that go on them and they work really well for that but our one and a half inch rectangle rings, which are available in antique brass nickel and black metal, would also work really well. So if I were making this bag today, I'd skip the round rings and I would just put the rectangle rings on. So inside the bag are, let me pull this out so you can see a little bit better. I may just turn it inside so you can see the pockets. So it has a nice roomy interior and there are pockets on both sides. This is a bag that has a loose lining um, because it's not quilted, it's not attached, but this one is divided into two sections. This, oh, I guess there's not one on this side. So just pockets on one side of the bag. So that is Serenity. Note that we also have another version of this pattern. So as I said earlier, this pattern was specifically written for using this gradating fabric. And I don't know that you can see it real well here, but this fabric has these great leaves on it. This one gradates from dark to light. So I used the dark sections for the body of the bag. I used the more light sections for the inside. And you can see the gradating a little bit better on the strap where it goes from dark to light. So the pattern gives you specific instructions for how to cut out so that you take full advantage of that fabric. But because we knew that, you know, fabrics don't last for other, forever and someone may want something different, we also did a pattern that we call Serenity 2 and that is this one. So because it doesn't have that special gradating fabric, you can actually make it with a little bit less fabric. So while this one calls for a yard of your main fabric, this one only calls for three quarters of a yard of your main fabric. Other than that, it's basically the same bag. So it's still got a slip pocket on the outside, the slip pockets on the inside, and then the flap with the texture magic added. So that again is Serenity 
and serenity too. Whoops, one just bit the dust. All right, the next one that I want to show you is this one. And this is another one that uses shrinking fabric for embellishment on the front. So we texturized fabric for the center panel of the bag. And again, we used unquilted fabric for the rest of the bag so that we could keep our focus on this texturized um, panel. And this bag has slip pockets on the inside um, that can be customized to suit your needs. You can divide them in two sections, three sections, however you want to do it. And the pattern includes instructions um, for two different ways to carry it. So you can either use wooden handles like this or you can do fabric handles as we did on this one. So we designed these to have soft and stable in them so they're nice and comfortable to carry and um, just makes a really cute little bag. This is a really super easy um, bag to make. This is the one that I wanted to show you. So I want to show you a couple things. First, I want to show you the difference that soft and stable makes. Then I want to show you kind of how it goes together. So this is the very same bag that we made using quilt batting. And you can probably see already just with me holding it here that the one that's made with soft and stable stands up and holds its shape a lot better. It has a much smoother finish even though there's no quilting on it. The one that we made with batting doesn't have nearly that same smooth appearance. And when I let go of the handles, let's see if I can do this here. The one that's made out of batting just totally collapses. So the one that made, is made out of soft and stable stands up and holds its shape, which means that when you go to get something in or out of your purse, you can open it up and access it without trying to fight keeping it standing up. So that is the one real benefit of soft and stable. And this pattern was designed really pretty much as a demonstration of that. So the way this bag goes together is super, super simple and easy to do. So let's just walk through the steps real quickly. So the first thing that you're going to do if you want to make the on the town bag is texturize a strip that you're going to cut out then into the shape for the center panel. And on here we just did a decorative stitch with a variegated thread, stitched lines about an inch apart, steamed it so it shrunk, and then we centered that panel on our piece of soft and stable. Then there are some little inset strips that you just fold in half and sew to each side. And then you take your sides of your bag, position them on there, sew that with a nice quarter inch seam, press that open, and you've got your front of your bag ready to go. You'll stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around that piece to join them, and then cut out even with the outside edges. You'll do the very same thing for the back. The back's even easier because it's just one piece. You don't have that center panel. And as you can see, it's only sewn around that outside edge. So there's no quilting, no other stitching. When I let go of it, it almost is like a magnet. The soft and stable pulls that fabric back into place and holds it in place. After you have your front and back ready to go, you're going to put them together. You're going to sew half inch seams on each side and on the bottom, press those seams open and then you're just going to bring your bottom edges together on each side sew those together and your bag's ready to go you'll do the same process to make your lining put those together sew around the top turn your lining to the inside and your last step is to attach the handles and the pattern gives full instructions for that so just a really super easy tote bag to make um, if you're looking for a fun bag to take to Hawaii or you know on a summer vacation it's one you might want to um, consider all right let's go on now to on the go which is kind of a totally different um, totally different kind of purse but this is one of my very favorite bags to carry. And until just recently, this was the bag that I carried every single day. What I love about this little bag is its size. It's the perfect size for everyday use. It fits everything that I need and nothing else. So I especially like this bag when I travel as everything I need is really close at hand. I can put it under my jacket. I know that everything's going to be in safe, safe and secure. Or if I need to put it into another travel bag, it's not going to take up very much room. So there is a zipper closure at the top and then it has lots and lots of pockets. So let's walk through some of those. So there is a flap on the front which has a zippered pocket 
It also has a vinyl pocket. And this is the perfect place to put your name badge holder, or use as a name badge holder if you're at a quilt show. I also really love it for putting my errand list because for me, if something is out of sight, it's out of mind. So if my list is right here and I can see it at the front of the bag, I'm much more likely to remember what I need to do. Here's a little confession. The pattern includes instructions for adding some slip pockets, which you may be able to see here. There are some slip pockets underneath this zippered pocket. When I wrote this pattern, I intended to use these pockets for holding my money and my receipts, and I thought it would be nice to have these little slip pockets to keep everything organized. Truthfully, there's just not enough room in there to really access them right, and I found that they really were not that useful. So now when I make a new on-the-go for myself, I just skip those pockets. So if you're making the pattern and you get to the pockets that go under the flap and you want to do that same, I would recommend that. There's another little vinyl pocket that's under the flap and I do really love having this pocket, so I would not skip it. So it's perfect for putting your ID card. Uh, if you go through security at the airport, you can have your um, driver's license in there and all you have to do is lift up the flap and it's right there ready to go. You don't even have to pull it out. Uh, when I get to the hotel, it's the perfect spot to put my room key, so I always know where it is. And when I go to Costco, my credit card and my um, Costco card are right there, and I'm not digging through my purse trying to find them, because you gotta dig them out several times. All right, on the back there is a nice deep slip pocket um, that's perfect for my phone. It's deep enough that my phone goes all the way to the bottom. I'm not gonna worry about it falling out. I can also put a couple of pins in there so it's really easy to access. I turned this one inside out so that you could see what the inside looks like. There are some credit card size pockets that are on the inside. I actually confess I don't use these for credit cards because I keep those together in a little wallet, but I do like them for my business cards. I can put my room key in there if I don't put it in the front one, and loyalty cards, perfect places for those. So um, when I travel, there's plenty of room inside here for my Kindle. Um, I usually put a little tiny wallet in here, my receipts my travel documents, pair of glasses. I actually usually use this pocket for my receipts and my coins, um, so that's all ready to go. The pattern does include instructions for a removable strap that can be adjusted so that you can wear it over the shoulder or crossbody, but here's another little tip. This pattern calls for um, making this half inch strap um, out of fabric and then using half inch hardware with it. I actually find this bag much more careful or comfortable to wear if I use a wider strap. Um, so when I made my latest one, I made a one inch strap for it. I, I, and I used one inch hardware on that strap, but I still used the half inch hardware on the bag for attaching it. So you can just um, get our free pattern for the carrying strap and pad and make just the strap um, to make a strap if you decide to go with the stronger, sturdier one-inch strap on that. So as with all the other patterns that we've talked about so far today, this is one of our older patterns. There is no add-on video series. It is definitely a pattern that I want to update it. I'm just not sure how soon I'm going to get to that because there are never enough hours in the day. The most challenging part of this bag is just doing this binding at the end because you're working in pretty tight quarters because this bag is so small. Um, I've seen people who say, can't you make it larger? I actually tried making one that was deeper, thinking that that would make it easier. I did not like the look of it. Um, it just seemed too big and bulky, but it might be something you um, want to consider. To me, the size of it is the perfect size, and you know, you just have to kind of push the pieces out of the way when you do that binding, so um, it's a very doable project to make. So again, that one is called On The Go. All right, I'm gonna pull all these up and then I'm gonna grab a drink of water before we talk about these. Well, let's talk about this one first. So if you like a little bit larger bag, this is another great purse for everyday use. And this one is called Bowl Me Over 2.0. 
So this bag has a classic bowler silhouette. People always say, bowler bag, is it made to carry a bowling ball? No, a bowler bag is just one that's shaped like this, so we named it for that. But it has easy to um, grab handles at the top and the option of making an adjustable detachable carrying strap. So if you are going to make the adjustable carrying strap, we recommend doing the short version of the handle sitter in the pattern. Um, the pattern also includes instructions for longer handles, and if you're going to do those, you can skip the carrying strap and pad. So on this one, we did the longer handles. So on the exterior of the bag, there is a slip pocket in the front that has a magnetic flap closure. That's a really great spot to put your phone, your keys, anything that you want to get really, to really quickly. On the back, there is a full width zippered pocket that's made of quilted fabric. And then the inside of the bag opens really wide so you can easily access everything that you have inside. There's plenty of room in here to put your lunch to carry to work or everything that you need to take for the day. I have also seen parents use this as a small diaper bag, so there's lots of different ways you can use this. On the inside of the bag, and I've got a couple here that are turned um, wrong, or inside out so that you can see the other side. On one side is a gathered pocket that's made out of fabric, and we used um, fold-over elastic to gather it and to uh, bind the upper edges, and it's divided into three sections. And then on the other side, we did a full height zippered pocket, and it can be made out of fabric as we did on this bag, or out of mesh as we did on this one. In the bottom of the bag, each one, is a little stabilizer sleeve. And that's a place to insert a base stabilizer to give it a really firm base. And you can either get a pre-made base um, from our website, or you can do as I did here and just cut your own from a piece of corrugated plastic. And to put that in, you just slide that into the sleeve. Come on, bag. I'm going to see if I can find one that's made out of that's loose. Oh, I've got every one of them stuck in, it looks like. And this one, I don't have one in it. All right, we're going to use this one. I think this one could be about a quarter of an inch narrower, and it would probably fit a little bit better. But we're not going to take the time right now to do that. Well, maybe I should. I'm not even going to show this. We've shown this before. You're going to slide this in, and then the trick is to push one side and pull it out. Oh, looky here. I do have a ready-made Annie one. See how much easier that slides in? Okay, then what you're going to do, so the trick on this, people always ask me, how do you put that thing in? The trick is you have to do it while it's inside out. So slide that in, and then I usually just grab that and give a little pull here and here, and then work my way over to this side, and again, give a little pull there. This is always the harder part, is getting that edge turned. But then once you're done, you've got that all ready to go. You can see on this bag, we um, customized it a little bit by adding some cork to it. So instead of using the quilted fabric here, we put some cork in there, same thing on the back, and that makes it really fun. So again, this is called Bowl Me Over, and this is an updated version of the original pattern. So it does have an add-on video, um, which has all our best techniques. It has our improved layout and design, and um, you're going to be sure to want to watch that if you make it. Also, make sure that you check out the N introduction and a closer look videos that are on the patterns product page for this one, because there's lots more information about this purse and ways that you can customize it to suit your needs. And if you haven't seen those videos, um, just all the images that we have of the uh, purse at the top, you'll always find those, if, those videos if they're available at the end. And they've got the little triangle so you know it's a video. And we have those for all of the patterns that we've written for the past several years. So again, that is called Bow Me Over 2.0. All right, let's move on now to Switchback. So this is our last purse style bag to show. And I've got it here in a couple of different versions, as well as one that I've turned inside out. So this is a sturdy, versatile satchel. It has adjustable straps that make it easy to carry it in a variety of ways. So you can either lift up on these straps. Let's see if I have one that allows me to do that. 
So you can lift up on the straps and carry it over your shoulder, adjusting them so it's the right length. You can carry it crossbody, or you can adjust it as we have here and carry it as a backpack. So you just decide how you want to carry it, adjust the straps for the style you want, and you're ready to go. So Switchback is designed to be made with a variety of fabrics, and you're going to alternate them for kind of a color block style. So that shows on the front pocket, on the flap, and on the back of the bag. So it's really a perfect design for a fabric that has really distinct motifs like this fabric from Tula Pink. Uh, this is her Curiouser and Curiouser fabric line. Um, you can also, and I just remembered I do have another one here, if you don't really like that color block look, you can also do as we did here and make it out of just one fabric. And so it gives you a very different look and um, that may be the style that you prefer. Um, each of the bags, which one do I wanna open up? I'll just open this one up. So there's a recessed zipper at the top that um, lets you have access inside and on the front of the bag is a welt pocket on the front pocket and a um and a and a slip pocket inside here and then i just get this one way out here how's that all right so um so the the flap can come down and fasten to the top you also have little accessory straps that are on each side of the bag on the inside. So if you want it to hook this on to your ring of keys, or if you had a carabiner that you want it to hook on that, you could use that. I like using these after I have my bag zipped up to pull it together because it helps the sides of the bag come in and it just gives it a better shape and also make sure that nothing's going to fall out these sides. So again, we've got that pocket on the front. There is no pocket on the back because that's where you're carrying against against your body. So on the inside, here's one that's turned inside out. So in the front is a little gathered pocket that's divided into two sections. Again, we used fabric and gathered it using fold over elastic. And then on the back is a full size um, zippered pocket that we made out of fabric for privacy. If you wanted to make this out of mesh, you certainly could. You just you know, make that change to a different material. So like Bowl Me Over, Switchback is a new pattern, so it's got our improved layout and design. It's got expertly drawn illustrations. It also has an add-on video series, as well as the introduction and closer look videos. So make sure you watch those, because we've got lots more information about this bag there as well. All right, I think I said that Switchback was the last purse style bag we had to show, but we are going to take a quick look at one more. And a lot of you have noticed in the past few weeks that we have had some new bags on our set. And so I thought I would give you just a really quick uh, little sneak peek at this. So this awesome little set of bags is made from a brand new pattern that we recently added to our website. We're going to be talking about it here on Facebook Live coming soon. So it's called Night and Day. It has a multi-compartmented purse. It also has a reversible mini tote. And I have been carrying this night and day purse for the past several weeks. I can tell you it has quickly become my very favorite purse. Here's what I love about it. It has two separate zippered compartments where I can keep all of my personal items, uh, my business items, and in between those, there is this handy little um, slip compartment. So that's for my phone and keys. And I just love the size of it and the easy accessibility. My sister's been carrying the tote, and she takes it every time we go shopping. She really likes it because it fits everything, and she says it's especially nice when she goes to the pool because she can put her water bottle, her book, and her towel in there, and she's got everything ready to go. You are going to love this new pattern. We can't wait to tell you about it some more, and we are going to do that on our July 6th Live with Annie episode. So we have begun shipping patterns to distributors and wholesale customers. We want them to have time to get stocked before we start shipping patterns from our website. So while you can pre-order the pattern on our website, we really ask that you check first at your local quilt shop because there is a really good chance that they are going to have it in stock before we start shipping from here. So again, we're going to introduce this set on Live with Annie on July 6th. 
So please join us then for all the details. So we, hang on. It's getting hot in St. George, Utah. We're supposed to be 105, I think, today. And this room is has been pretty cool up to now, but today it is very warm, so water tastes really good. But I hope you enjoyed this little mini trunk show of purses. I hope you found a project or two that you'd like to make. And as always, ask at your favorite local quilt shop to get the patterns and supplies for your projects. If your local store doesn't have them, just remind them that they can order everything that they need that's a Biani product directly from us or from their favorite distributor. Uh, we ask that you help do your part to keep local quilt shops strong and successful. And again, if you don't have a local quilt shop, um, feel free to order from us directly at Biani.com. All right, the next question is, how do you choose which fabrics to go on which bag? Uh, Glow and I just spent the whole morning picking out fabric. So what happens here at Biani is that we work with a lot of fabric companies and they will send us fabrics, usually every fabric that's in the line. And so when the fabric comes in, we will usually organize them into three into sets of three. So we will pick a main fabric, a lining fabric, and a coordinating fabric. Most of our patterns use those three fabrics. This, fab this pattern actually only uses two fabrics. So you've got a main fabric on the outside, a lining fabric on the inside, and on this one, because it's reversible, we try to pick two fabrics that would both look good as main fabrics because if you want a totally different look, yours is going to turn this bag you know, inside out and you don't want some really light lining fabric on the outside of your bag. So here you've got a totally different look from your bag. On here, we probably picked something that's more of a lining fabric, a little lighter to go on the inside. So we'll try to pick for the outside something really bright, eye-catching, usually a little darker, um, something like that. For the linings, we'll usually go lighter unless we have a situation like this where we want to be able to reverse it. And then for the coordinates, we'll often pick something that reads as a solid. So if you look at this bag, um, we wanted on here, we actually made it match the sides of our bag, but handles and straps tend to get a lot of wear and tear, a lot of hands on them, so we'll usually go with something a little darker for that. So that's kind of the, how we do it. And again, we're working with fabric sent to us by fabric companies, so usually we're going from everything in one line, which I think makes it way easier because fabric designers do a great job of giving you lights, mediums, darks, large scale, medium scale, small scale, and that makes it really easy to combine them and get a cohesive look. All right, which purse or tote has the least amount of zippers? Serenity has zero zippers, so that one is definitely the least. I, um, on the town has no zippers. So another one that has, on the, this has a magnet that's hidden underneath here that um, helps you close your flap. Um, Annie's Favorite Purses only has one. Going Downton only has one. I um, can't remember what else I showed here. Bow Me Over has a couple, but they're all easy to do, so um, not hard at all. The next question is, which bag is your favorite to sew? Huh. You know, I actually love sewing every bag. On the Town, as I said, is a little bit complicated because you've got that it's really small, and I mean, not on the Town, on the go. Um, that's a little more challenging, but I still, I've made lots and lots of those bags. I, I will wear through one in a couple years, so I, every couple years I make myself a new one, and I've probably made and carried at least 10 of those bags. So even though that binding is a little bit of a challenge at the end, it doesn't bother me enough to not make that bag. So um, other than that, I love them all. This one is a really fun one to make, and I can't wait to show you this because this is so super simple and easy to do. This is one 30 inch zipper that makes both zippered compartments. It goes together so simple and easy and I know you're going to love this one. So be sure and join us on July 6th when we talk about all the features of this set. All right, we are going to be leaving in just a couple of weeks for Chicago for the H&H America show. 
and we've talked about this a little bit in the past. It's a brand new business to business trade show for the crafts industry. If you have a business in the fiber industry, we hope that you're planning to attend. Uh, we managed to get all the models packed. Now we just need to get them shipped and figure out how we're going to set up our booth. Um, we had decided to do it the way we normally do our booth with Gridwall, and we had to order Gridwall because we didn't have enough here. And so we needed, I think, 32 pieces to get our um, booth set up. But because there's a nationwide shortage of Gridwall, apparently, we only got about a quarter of what we needed. Um, so we're going back to the drawing board, and Casey is off to the lumber store uh, to try and figure out a way to make the, the booth work uh, differently. So it's going to be a crazy couple of days here getting that all together so that we can get it shipped and, and at, the, at the show in time. So if you are going to the show, please look for us in booth 1007, and we can't wait to see you there. All right, let's move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. At By Annie, we are all about supporting local businesses, especially local quilt shops, because they truly are the backbone of our quilting communities. And we do that by hosting our annual quilt shop contest every year in February, during which we encourage sewists to vote for their favorite quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes them special. And then each week, we continue the fun by highlighting a store and some of their voters' submissions during Live with Annie. This week, we are featuring a store that is very near and dear to my heart, Mother Superior's Fab Fabrics, who is right here in beautiful St. George, Utah. So the store is owned and operated my, by my dear friend, Heather Purcell, who many of you may know as Mother Superior. Heather and Bob were very instrumental in getting Biani patterns introduced to the world, and I really owe both of them a debt of gratitude. I learned so much about thread and needles and color and the quilting industry from Bob and Heather, and I will always be very, very grateful to both of them. So Heather's store has amazing color walls. She also has a tremendous selection of batik fabrics. They also stock a full selection of superior threads, from So Fine 50 and Masterpiece to Rainbows and King Touch. So if you are looking for superior threads, um, be sure and check them out. They are really known for their wide selection of fun and gallery-worthy quilt kits. They have cute panel kits with character prints for children's quits, quilts and beautiful batik ones with geometric repeating patterns, and you're sure to find a kit from them for your next project. Fab Fabrics also carries many Biani patterns and other products, and they always have a great trunk show of our models on display. In fact, we just totally updated their whole display and just this afternoon, I am going to go over with models of our brand new patterns as well as patterns for those. So it is a really great place to shop for Biani products in St. George. And I can tell you that Fab Fabrics is going to be the very first shop in the world to have our newest patterns. So that's pretty cool. If you live in Southern Utah or if you're planning a road trip to the Grand Canyon or Zion National Park, both of which are close by, be sure to stop in at their store and check out the Biani Trunk Show and their great fabric selection. And if you do, be sure to tell them that Annie sent you. So customers who voted for um, Fab Fabrics in our contest raved about their huge selection, their helpful staff, and the peaceful, calm atmosphere in the store. And Peyton said, Heather's patterns are really pretty and some of the best I've ever seen. They really give a lot of inspiration for projects. And Patty listed what she loves about Fab Fabrics. Fabulous selection of fabrics, lots of Biani patterns and notions, superior threads available, and most of all, terrific caring staff. So we want to say thank you to Heather, Dani, Jay, and all the crew at Fab Fabrics. We really appreciate your inspiration and your friendship. Thank you again to all of you who joined us today. We are going to be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time for another fun episode of Live with Annie when we will be showcasing more by Annie patterns for totes and accessories. Uh, we've got lots of fun patterns to share, so be sure to mark your calendar to join us then. And until then, happy stitching! <laughs>